We acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which these films have been made all over Australia. We acknowledge Elders past and present and all First Nation peoples watching us today. Hi everyone, it's time to get in the groove. I'm Carol and welcome to Seniors in the Groove, the best of the Victorian Seniors Festival 2020. We're shining a light on some creative and inspiring talent featured online in the Victorian Seniors Festival 2020. We've got music, song, dance, performances from a diverse range of cultures. Seniors in the Groove, created especially for Victorian seniors. Welcome to our very first Seniors in the Groove. Now, last year, the Seniors Festival couldn't run live events. So Seniors Online Victoria produced videos and placed them online from May to October. There's music, song, dance, and performances from a diverse range of cultures. And what we've done is we've taken a snapshot and put them together in a TV show for you. To kick off the show today, do you like singing? Have you thought about joining a choir? Maybe you just sing around while you're doing the housework or sing in the shower. Our first guest, Deborah Cheatham, is going to share her passion for opera singing. And after the break, movement is essential for good health and it's even better when done with music. Our guest is inspiring Caroline Bowditch and she's going to show us that Regardless of your physical abilities, you can put on some music and do your own choreography. So while you're watching today, see if you can follow along with Caroline. And finally, we're going to look at the computer, a humorous look with comedian Ross Daniels, affectionately known as Swampy. Now, let's get in the groove. Here's Tristan with our first guest. Our next guest on In The Groove is an absolutely phenomenal opera singer. She's a proud Yorta Yorta woman whose work has uh, encompassed many, many regions throughout Victoria. She runs short black opera. She has sung on world stages, an absolute class act. Could you introduce yourself to our wonderful audience? I'm Deborah Cheatham and I'm artistic director of Short Black Opera Company. I'm also a professor of music here at Monash University where I'm recording this interview today. I firstly need to pay my deepest respects to the people of the Wurundjeri on whose land I work and draw energy and inspiration each and every time I come onto this campus at Clayton. But I also would like to pay my respects to the people of the Bunwarang. Uh, this is the country that I live on and the energy of the Bunwarang has sustained my artistic practice for well, ever since I moved to Melbourne, which is almost 15 years ago now. Uh, finally, I want to pay my respects to my mother and my grandmother, who were Yorta Yorta women. And tell us a little bit about your love for the art of opera. About 10 years ago, uh, or a little bit longer, I started having a conversation about what Indigenous opera could sound like in Australia. And some people struggled to imagine it, but I had a very clear vision of what Indigenous opera could be. I've had a long love affair with opera ever since I was a schoolgirl and was introduced to my very first opera, Dame Joan Sutherland in The Merry Widow, the Concert Hall of the Sydney Opera House, row L, seat number 23. And I was sitting next to my lifelong mentor and music teacher, Jennifer King. Right from that very first moment that I encountered opera, I knew that this was something that was part of my DNA. How so? Well, opera is no stranger to the indigenous nations of this land. We've been singing our stories for something like 2000 generations. 
So I feel like my long relationship with, with opera, it was, it was meant to be. This week is actually themed around the uh, theme of pride and hope. Uh, you mentioned you're a proud Yorta Yorta woman and you've spent a lot of time working with First Nation artists with your company, Short Black Opera. Why is it so important to cultivate uh, First Nation artists uh, in the art of opera? Opera is such a fabulous medium for telling the really big and important stories. And we've seen that throughout its Western history of the last 300 or so years. 12 years ago, I felt that there just hadn't been enough done to provide opportunities for Indigenous singers who wished to pursue a career in the world of opera. I was at the time Australia's only Indigenous opera singer working professionally. And that's just, uh, you can't call that underrepresentation. That's just <laughs> ridiculous, really. I felt that we, uh, as Indigenous nations, have such a strong connection to the sung story and to music and to the arts more generally. Opera brings all of the arts together and it was, a, a, for me, a really obvious relationship between Indigenous culture and opera. So I formed the Short Black Opera Company. We have been developing not only singers, but also musicians more recently. Particularly in relation to Gandala's Children Choir, how does that uh, project, that choir, that group of young First Nation uh, vital members fill you with pride? Do you know, I often say that Dungala Children's Choir, they're a reason for getting up in the morning. There are two choirs. One is based on Yorta Yorta country up in Shepparton and the other is based in, uh, in Geelong, down on Wathorong country. And just this weekend, you'll be interested to know, they came together for uh, a Zoom choir. We put together a brand new song that is one of the numbers from a children's opera I'm writing, actually. I'm doing that in collaboration uh, with the wonderful Jessica Hitchcock and my beautiful partner, Tony Lavich. Speaking of your wonderful partner, the amazing pianist and musician, Tony Lalich, you both collaborate often together. What is it like to collaborate with your beloved? Like any partnership where there's sort of no 5 p.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no nine to five <laughs> yeah. uh, existence for our, our little opera company. So mm. sometimes we're ready to, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I We're ready to just have some time alone, <laughs> yes. have our own isolation. <laughs> For the most part, I am so very fortunate to have such a gifted pianist as my partner in music and in life. Could you introduce the song that you are going to sing for uh, this wonderful episode of In The Groove? I thought that I really couldn't go past Visidate because it really is... Uh, it really is one of, I think, the most quintessential roles uh, for any soprano uh, in the Verismo style, the role of Tosca. And as she sings about her absolute dedication to art and she asks her creator, why have you abandoned me in this great time of need? I think it's really pertinent to what has happened for our industry, Tristan. Agreed. You know, so many people from uh, across every area of society, no one has been uh, left untouched by the situation we're in.
information on the Seniors Online Festival or to watch more videos, please visit seniorsonline.vic.gov.au. Carolyn Bowditch is an internationally renowned performance artist, dance maker, choreographer and passionate arts and inclusion activist. For the last 16 years she's been working in the UK and recently Victoria welcomed her home and we're thrilled to welcome her here to In The Groove. Carolyn, how are you? Very well, thank you Tristan and thanks so much for having me. It's a real joy to be part of this. Carolyn, what is your earliest memory of dance? When I was probably about six or seven uh, dressed in a tiny weeny little black strapless leotard, thinking of myself as living in John from Greece. Side ponytail, lots of very bad makeup going on. That's really where dancing started for me. What are the values that underpin your creative practice? I think I make always from a place of curiosity. I think about myself as being a bit of a reactive choreographer. I make with purpose. I make uh, work that I feel needs to be made that has a really strong and clear story to tell. And I like to think that it all comes from a place of love. I always want to perform and make work that is a conversation. When I've made work recently, it's very much been about the interaction, I don't like performing for a passive audience. I hate the thought of people coming in, sitting in the dark, in their seats and expecting to be entertained. Your artistic practice has many glorious intersections. It's inclusive, superbly queer and created for young and old alike. In fact, I have a very soft spot for a particular work that you've created for children and families with a delightful snail what can we learn from children as audiences? They are the most honest audience that you'll ever find. If they don't like it, they will walk away. <laughs> um, and there is something joyous about that. I get lots of questions from kids about, why are you so little? And so I'll tell them. And then it's like, my dad snores really bad. Or they'll move on to something completely different. And there is something fantastic about that. Falling in Love with Frida was a wonderful work that you've created. Tell us about this work and how Frida inspired your practice. Falling in Love with Frida is about the life, loves and legacy of Frida Kahlo, the Mexican painter who lived with disability for her whole life. It's not the thing that people necessarily know about Frida. I wanted to reclaim her as a disabled artist and I wanted to tell her story from a disability perspective. People came expecting to learn about Frida, which hopefully they did, but mostly they learned about me. You're not all getting it though. <laughs> I've recently moved back home, the UK's loss and Victoria's gain to take on the role of CEO of Arts Access Victoria. I was a freelance artist in the UK for 16 years. When this role came up, it felt like the timing was perfect. I felt like I had spent 16 years gathering wisdom, experience um, and knowledge to really bring back. I feel like that this, the art sector is really hungry to have this conversation about how we can become more inclusive and more accessible and to really value the work of deaf and disabled artists and that is always a massive enticement for me. Arts Access Victoria has been running programs for many years. In fact, next year, Art Day South turns 30. That must fill you with pride. The amazing thing about Art Day South is that it retains so many of the original members that have been involved since the beginning. So they've grown older with us. They continue to be involved. And all of those artists would be labelled as having an intellectual disability. But to us, they're artists, they're practising artists. Finally, Carolyn, can you please introduce your piece for the Victorian Seniors Festival and why you've chosen to create this for us today? I haven't made anything for the last two years. So since I came into the role as CEO, I haven't made work. And um, we were listening to 
our friend Zach Scott's album. Um, and this song that I chose to uh, use in the performance came on and I said to my partner, Laura, I want to choreograph something to this. Just take a seat, put up your feet as you walk into Swampy. Hey folks, old Swampy here, your suffering Socrates. Uh, today's question comes from Sid. G'day Sid. Sid asks, Dear Swampy, think I'm on the computer too much. What should I do? Well, Sid, first up, maybe delete your browsing history. But seriously, what are we talking? 20, 30 hours without a loo break? If so, you might need to go to rehab. Also, what are you doing? Are you working on your PhD or are you blowing things up in the world of handcraft? Or are you writing your novel? Or instead just looking at cats on Tic Tac? Big difference. Remember when you were a kid, you watched too much TV and your parents would go, oh, careful, you get square eyes? We can't really say that now. All the tellies and computers, they're all widescreen. Oh, careful, your eyes will go 16 by 9. Doesn't have the same ring. And Sid, what are we talking? Is it just the computer or your double screening or triple screening? Do you know that? It's when you've got like the telly on, you've got the laptop on your knee and you're checking out the phone. You're turning into a one-person multiplex. Ultimately, it's about moderation. If you think you've been on the computer too long, get up and if you can, go for a walk. Check out the real world. It's the best video game around. Oh yeah, very realistic graphics and talk about 3D. And I'll give you a bit of goss, yeah. This video game, you only get the one life. All right, I'll see you next time. Uru, go doggies. Swampy, he's really very clever. I'm Carol. Thanks for watching with us today. We'll see you again, same time, next week.